Hi, Philip. Hello. How are you? Hi. I am good. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you for joining in. <laughs> so nice to see you. Um, again, uh, folks will folks will join in in the next five minutes. Okay. So. All right. <laughs> I think um, again, August is August is already you know the, always a holiday time uh, for many folks. So. Um, Again, but we got you right in the beginning, so it's all good. <laughs> I'm here. Yes, that's the important thing. <laughs> totally, totally. Are you going to be at KubeCon? No, um, so far from me. I'm in Europe, in in Germany, and okay, okay, uh, cool, cool. Will you be very... going to PromCon? <laughs> yeah, I'll go. I'll go to PromCon. Awesome. Yeah, awesome, awesome, very cool. So definitely, I know it's just uh, you know traveling. <laughs> to the U.S. is always and at least a week, if not more. <laughs> uh, yeah, also like administrative restrictions with visas and all that. Yes, yes, it's just that too much paperwork. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Chris. Good morning. Morning. <laughs> morning. How are you? Awake. How are we, <laughs> <No. all? laughs> we had the TOC meeting right before this, so it's like. You have to be awake now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least at least the good thing is you know doing early morning uh, eight eight a.m. meetings. You at least have um, uh, Europe covered, which is really nice. Hi, Bartek. Mm -hmm. How are you? Hello. How are you? <laughs> good. Good. How are you? <laughs> You're well. on a, a nice nice issues free here. Great to see that. Oh, fun, right? <laughs> Who's gonna solve this? <laughs> yes, we'll do it. Absolutely. But thank yes. you for taking the lead on, you know, getting the white paper uh, wrapped up, and uh, hopefully we can, you know, both uh, we can all present it uh, not only at at uh, PromCon but also KubeCon um, mm -hmm. in the next few months. Mm -hmm. Should be fun. <laughs> Will there be PromCon um, like a collocated event with with KubeCon or no? I, mean, there's I think there's observability like, days. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I think it's converged into observability day because uh, you know everybody wanted to be in every event. <laughs> it was just too hard for the the KubeCon folks to you know uh, make sure that people could attend. Um, so again, great great collaboration across the community to. You know, converge on um, on one observability day for KubeCon at least. <laughs> I hope you will uh, present uh, Philip on observability day or propose a talk. Yes, exactly, exactly. This is this is just uh, getting him started. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hook me in. Uh, <laughs> no, I have to travel to the U.S. Um, it's too much of a hassle for me. Yeah. yeah, that's that Bartek. That's what he was, um, uh, Philip was mentioning earlier. <laughs> I had asked him the same. <laughs> All right, we have Ken, we have Anton. Hi, Anton. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good, good. <laughs> All right, we'll wait for another minute and then I think we can get started. Um, we let me just share our agenda doc. Okay. Those of you who haven't signed in, please do add your name and I shall share my screen for the agenda doc so that uh, again, uh, folks can just sign in. And uh, we had a TOC update this morning, so I had added the slide in here uh, so folks can take a look. I just gave an update on some of the activities that we are planning. Um, Bartek, I also found out, uh, Ken, uh, Chris, on that we can actually have a tag, uh, you know, meeting, project meeting kind of uh, session at KubeCon. So I'll see, you know, if we can actually get a room so that folks can at least, you know, we can all gather up um, to just meet up and, you know, uh, see each other face-to-face -face as well as discuss any topics. 
Last time was fully packed, so. Yeah, I know. But I heard that the some of the other tags were also doing, uh, starting to get organized and get a you know place to meet. So uh, definitely I'll follow up on that. Cool. All right. With that said, again, uh, before we start uh, with Philip's talk, uh, who, uh, you know, and Philip will be focusing in on Thanos uh, query, performance improvements today in his talks, are super excited to have him here. Um, there were a couple of other updates, I think. Um, I already shared the slide for the TOC, so please take a look. Um, and um, Partek, did you want to just call out um, any uh, updates on the white paper before we get started with Philip's talk? Then we can just switch over to Philip. Mm -hmm. So Philip, you you will you will use all the time. <laughs> he's Great. he's the star today. <laughs> yeah, because I added uh, the item at the end, uh, but I can okay. share share sooner. So essentially, um, we have um, roughly three week period of um kind of review and contributions is very short but like again the, the paper was there for two years so yes. we wanted to contribute <laughs> which they could but of course we could promote it more and, and we could do more job in marketing whatever but um already we have like a 50, 70 different contributions like 10 more people roughly 10 more people contributed so um it's already a, a good way to clean up and fortify we, and make it very solid, solid with, with the content that we already have on the white paper and claim this 1.0 uh, version right and then we iterate and give more um you know like opportunities to contribute because there are lots of things we can cover and make it a full book essentially and that's perfect Absolutely. that's why i spammed a lot of issues so everybody can also add their own issues but generally fulfill some some kind of topic for the version 1.1, 1 .1, right? But for mm -hmm. the ones, you know, the pull request to synchronize those um, those updates are to, to our main repo are there. And I propose that you, Alolita, and, and Rich, and Matt um, kind of review it uh, roughly. Of course, everybody is welcome to review for any typos. Um, I use a Grammarly, yes. which is this plugin, whatever, but like- Good, good, yes. Sorry? I said, at this point, it's time. It's just yeah. it's had enough <laughs> review. It's it's I'm I'm psyched to to see movement here. Yeah. yeah. But but with this then we could maybe ask for a technical um, review and technical kind of rewrite of that, um, so we can be even more better. Um, but yeah, that's the that's the that's the next steps. Cool, cool. But thank you and and you know thanks for picking this up and driving it. Uh, I think you know once we get to one dot as you said. Uh, it will be super valuable to have, you know, feedback coming in and then we can just iterate in terms of, you know, point versions and updates. Uh, and also, I think that uh, if we can get organized enough, you know, perhaps use KubeCon as well as other, uh, uh, you know, uh, conferences such as PromCon to be able to get feedback from other end users, you know, who are uh, participating and also, you know, add real uh, use cases in because uh, I think that that will also provide great value uh, into the, you know, current version and then continue to uh, evolve from there. So thank you again. Uh, that's that's a really, really important big step. Um, with that said, again, I know that we had another topic on the OLLI scorecard, but I would like to give most of the time to Philip today on the talk we're all looking forward to. So with that said, I'll stop sharing and Philip, uh, over to you. Please, right. uh, you know, feel free to introduce yourself. Um, again, uh, we're very happy to have you here. Super happy you're contributing to Thanos. Uh, it's used by, you know, many, many end users and teams across the world. So thank you for your contributions. And uh, with that said, uh, over to you. Okay, thank you. So I'll, I'll share my screen. Um, I think you should be able to see the slides. Yeah, we can. Uh, perfect. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for the invites. Uh, it's really a pleasure. Um, today, as as you also Alita brought up, uh, I'd like to talk about some of the query performance improvements that we've uh, been working on in the Thanos project. Um, and before that, I'll just briefly introduce myself uh, my name is Philip. Um, I am a what we call a production engineer at, at Shopify. I've been there for a year and a half approximately. I'm also, uh, for the past year or so, I've been a Thanos maintainer, 
kind of actively contributing, reviewing PRs and, and things like that. Um, this is my GitHub handle and I don't use other social media. I consider GitHub to also be social media, um, but I'm not active on, on Twitter and Mastodon and whatnot. Uh, and currently I'm based in, in Munich in Germany. Um, so maybe just briefly about um, the Thanos project. So Thanos is a CNCF incubating project. Um, the, I think it was started 2018, 19, I'm not sure. I think Bartek has more context there. Um, and uh, the main goal of, of this project is to allow users to have a scaled out Prometheus deployment. So Prometheus has been designed from the beginning to be a single node, single process um, monitoring system for metric collection. And um, Thanos kind of extends that, um, that mission and that goal by allowing users to have a multi-node distributed uh, metrics uh, system. And so far we've had over 350 contributors, which is I think great to see. Uh, and the current kind of team is composed of approximately 20 um, team members that all kind of uh, also actively contribute and review PRs. Um, I somehow lost my slides, sorry, just a sec. Um, all right. Um, so to kind of explain maybe on a very high level overview how you can just get started with Thanos today or what's the easiest way to, to run Thanos. Um, if you're already using Prometheus and you have Prometheus instances in various different environments, um, um, what you can do is you can deploy this very lightweight process called the Thanos sidecar. And through the Thanos sidecar, uh, Thanos querier can actually pull data out of Prometheus and evaluate PromQL queries. So PromQL is the language that we use in Prometheus. Thanos understands the same query language. Um, and typically you would run, you know, a Prometheus instance per some environment boundary, uh, whatever that means for you. It can be a Kubernetes cluster, a namespace, or some VPC or anything like that. And as you um, start to have more and more of these Prometheus, it kind of you get into fragmentation issues. Uh, so with this very simple setup, you can get a, a global view over all of your metrics data, and you can also have global alerting in your infrastructure. Um, besides being able to query metrics from Prometheus, Thanos um, also can get data from object storage. So the, 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 the sidecar that runs next to Prometheus can be configured to upload the data to object storage. Um, Prometheus also has this concept of a remote write API where it can send data somewhere else. Um, and um, that data can be sent to a Thanos receiver, which the query can also query. Um, and you, if you're, you know, have very specific needs, you can also implement a custom storage system. And as long as that storage system it respects the contracts uh, of what the query expects to get, uh, you can also connect it to the query and use PromQL and federate data across um, a larger fleet, so to say. Um, what's also important is that um, it's very, very typical to have replicate data for high availability. So you might have pairs of Prometheus instances running or data might be replicated in, in different ways. So the, the query is also able to deduplicate this data. Um, so you get both the benefits of high availability, but you also don't see you know, double the amount of errors that you actually have or double the amount of requests or throughput in your system. So the query can deduplicate, replicate the data and give you only unique results. Um, so that's kind of the, the high level overview and, and intentionally this query is here at the, at the center of the diagram. Um, so uh, if, if we kind of take a look at a, um, a trace, a hypothetical trace um, of uh, of a query um, approximately a year ago or a bit more, we would have like two of these two of these major spans that that have you know seventy percent of of the time will be spent in this data retrieval and deduplication, and the other maybe forty percent would have been spent in in executing the actual PromQL expression. So the reason why this, this green bar is so big or used to be actually so big, not anymore, is um, because we had to like buffer and resort data, which was very computationally, uh, computationally intensive, also used a lot of memory. 
but even when we were past that process, um, we were relying on the, the query engine that exists in Prometheus today, which by design is meant to be single threaded. Um, and we were never able to use more than a single core to, um, to evaluate basically an expression. So both us internally and also a lot of users uh, would, would complain that, um, you know, hashtag Thomas is slow and things like that, and that they had more success with other systems, which uh, I think used to be the case, but is very likely uh, not the case today, um, especially with the, everything that we've done. And I'll, I'll talk through some of the improvements. Whoops. So the kind of the whole initiative um, started with this major PR um, by another maintainer. Um, and kind of the details of the PR are not that important, but we see like the, the benchmarks that are attached in the PR show that there are some, you know, between 30% to 70% improvements in certain aspects of this query uh, execution part. And um, what this PR did was um, it changed the way that this green bar, this deduplication process was done um, so that um, the query didn't have to like read all of this data and all load all of this data in memory and resort it and do all of this kind of data massaging before it would pass it into the engine. Uh, what it would rather do and what it actually does today if you run Thanos is it creates like um, a heap-like data structure um, and it also establishes asynchronous connections to underlying uh, data stores. Um, and then it kind of, as it's reading data from the underlying stores, it's able to uh, deduplicate time series data uh, for, for series that are basically replicas of each other and only keeps the, the unique, you know, one unique series per um, replication group. Um, and also, you can see here on the diagram that you know a querier can also talk to other queries, which is a fairly neat feature of Thanos. So the the lower level querier can also will also establish the same pattern, and it's also going to deduplicate its own data set, um, and it's going to stream only unique data upwards. Um, so by by kind of adding this very sophisticated mechanism uh, with streaming and online uh, on the fly deduplication. Uh, we've, we've basically, uh, we've been able to arrive or we were able to arrive to a place where this retrieval and duplication process was, um, was the, the penalty of that was much smaller. Uh, and we were still kind of uh, locked into, so to say, this single threaded Prometheus query uh, engine that we had no control over. It was basically imported directly from Prometheus. Um, so with that in mind, um, kind of with um, with kind of those constraints that we had, we knew that we could not basically change the Prometheus engine. Um, we kind of started, kind of very sporadically started an initiative to completely rewrite uh, our PromQL query engine from scratch um, so that uh, we we would be able to run queries on multiple threads, a single query on multiple threads utilizing as many resources as possible. Um, and so obviously we didn't kind of fully start from scratch. We reviewed the, the literature and what's available there. Um, it's obviously not a new topic. Many databases exist today and we kind of, uh, we were really inspired by this paper called Volcano that's very, has been very influential and to some form is still used in many different databases today. Like the Postgres database, for example, uh, heavily utilizes the Volcano model. Um, and other databases, even if they don't directly use it there, they also use some, some modification of it. Um, so for those of you that maybe ha like understand a bit of code, I think this is the only slide where I actually have code. Um, so the, 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 the Volcano model has this concept of an operator. Um, and as we can see, the, an operator is, um, is an interface, which means that we have multiple different operators running in a system. Um, and also we can see here that an operator has a next method. So we can call, so an operator um, can call next on other operators. And this is how we kind of connect these different types of operators. 
Um, and once we have them connected, um, we get what we call uh, an execution plan. So this is what we, we kind of take a query expression and we construct an execution plan. And this is what, this is what actually runs and evaluates an expression. Um, so to see how that works in practice, um, this is an example of a PromQL query. So it does a sum rate over um, a selector. So what we would do is we will create three operators, one for the selector, one for rate, one for sum. So we get like this graph structure. Um, and when we start evaluating the, the actual query, um, we the the selector is going to start kind of crunching data from the beginning of the query range until the end of the query range um and then the rate operator is going to be responsible for its own for kind of applying its own function and we see here immediately that we have like a layered um a, a pipeline like setup where um as soon as the selector is done with t0 it's going to uh, send the sub result to, to the rate function and while the rate function is, is working on T0, the selector can already start working on T1. Um, and the same can be done with SUM, for example. So while SUM is working on T0, the rate is capable of working on T1 and the selector is capable of working on T2. So now, um, if we want to utilize multiple cores, we simply run each operator in a new uh, in a new core. So since we use Golang, that's go, uh, go routine for us, but if this was a different language, it might be a thread or some other concurrency primitive. Um, and again, if we would complicate this expression even more, if we make it a binary expression, we kind of do the same thing. We create another sub pipeline and that sub pipeline can also uh, run uh, concurrently or in parallel essentially. So each operator here can run in parallel. Um, and so we can also, so this is how we create um, this parallelism between different, basically, these are essentially functions inside a single query ex expression. Um, we can also add parallelism inside a single function. So uh, in practice, we've noticed that the rate function is very computationally, at least more in, uh, computationally um, intensive than the sum function. So we can create multiple instances of rate and we kind of virtually partition the data set so that each instance uh, works on its own sub partition. Uh, and then we join that result with this synthetic coalesce operator. Um, so by doing this kind of partitioning, uh, we, can, we can assign uh, more cores to a single function inside a single core expression. So by playing with this kind of graph structure, we can really inject uh, concurrency where we need it. Um, and so with, with those changes, um, we've been able to get to a point where, you know, a query that you run today with, with a multi-threaded engine enabled um, would be approximately, I would say five times faster to what it was if you're using a, a Thanos version from you know a year ago or more, so the there's a flag that you can toggle in Thanos today that, that's going to enable the multi-threaded query execution mode, uh, and also as far as I know, the Cortex project also has the same engine enable, um, available. I don't think it's the default, but it's also possible to use it in Cortex if you're using Cortex. Um, so that's kind of the that's kind of what what has been done, what's been completed, the work that's been, that's kind of wrapped up, and it's also available in the latest release and also in the latest uh, main branch. Uh, what I would like to talk about um, as kind of the last topic uh, and what we are still kind of trying to roll out, mostly because there are some UI changes that that need to be done, but the work is already there and merged, um, is actually kind of this re really powerful distributed execution mode. And so as I also mentioned before, um, queriers can talk to other queriers. So it's not uncommon to have a, a, a layered setup where you might have um, data stored either in per cluster or per region, and then 
um, there might be a query responsible for each region. So here, this is a hypothetical example where we have region A or region B, but can also be cluster A, cluster B, or um, you know any again some some larger grouping of data. Um, so in the in the class or in the typical mode, um, what would happen is when we run uh, an, a query, um, the root querier is going to uh, use the second level queries as, as proxies. So basically it will pull all of the relevant data for a query in memory. So the, the, the regional queries, they still do you know, the duplication, so it's not a bad spot to be in, um, but they do have a query engine as well, uh, which by default is not utilized. So with um, like a proper distributed execution, uh, we are able to decompose a query into or an aggregation into sub aggregations. And these sub aggregations are pushed to the, in this particular case, they will be pushed to the regional queries. So we've kind of heard this, this concept that, you know, data has gravity. So we don't want to pull data to compute. We'd rather want to push computation to the data. And this is what we're doing with distributed execution. We're um, kind of trying to figure out what's the closest compute um, to the data that we're querying and, and ask that node to actually evaluate as, um, a query. So um, obviously with, with this mode, we get like this very, you know, pretty, we get pretty big leverage because um, if we don't have distributed execution, as we are adding more data to the system, we lose scalability. We can't keep adding data indefinitely because we can't, at one point, we won't be able to query the data set. It's going to be the this kind of top level query is going to be a bottleneck. Uh, whereas with distributed execution, um, each region, if we keep adding new regions, each region is going to have its own engine uh, and that engine will be responsible for sub aggregation of the regional level. Um, also, something really interesting that we've been exploring is uh, by using this this um, this new API that's been added, we can now also query um, external services. So there are many cloud providers now have support for PromQL. Uh, for example, Google has recently added support from PromQL. Um, the AWS managed Prometheus service allows you to run PromQL directly. Um, so we can now federate um, queries across data that we ingest in our own infrastructure and data that's available in some third party service. So as long as that third party service can evaluate PromQL, um, we'll be able to kind of have um, a query that calculates some expression globally, both on data that's locally ingested in our infra, but also that's also available um, externally. So which is pretty interesting. We're getting to kind of a presto style federation mode. Um, yeah, which is yeah really cool. Um, and yeah, also the the good kind of the the point of this whole thing is that most here basically I've, I've worked with a example using a sum, but um, all aggregations in PromQL can be partitioned this way. I think there might be one exception, um, but you know, account, a group, a top, a top k all of them can be partitioned into mm -hmm. like a main aggregation and, and sub aggregations. Um, yeah, okay. And then the kind of the last thing I want to talk about is that um, even though we have this query engine that's specific to, to Thanos and, and Prometheus and PromQL, uh, it does have many extension points. Um, for example, there are various optimizers that um, can transform the shape of, of an expression before it's even executed. Um, there's also a way to add custom functions that are not available in, in PromQL. So for example, we've added support for X rate and X increase, um, which, you know, there's an upstream issue in Prometheus that, that discusses, you know, whether this should be in Prometheus or not, but we we've added them as experimental functions because people have asked for them. Um, and you know, if you need a function, you can easily in inject it. Um, 
also you can also add like custom operators um, if you need to replace an operator if you need to talk to different storage that's not prometheus that's also possible um and yeah going kind of looking into the future i think you know having also observability for ourselves would be great so we want to know things like how much does it cost to compute a sum versus uh, a rate versus some other functions. So we want to have more instrumentation internally to tell us that. Um, we want to definitely support different storage formats, not just be coupled to Prometheus as we are now. Um, and would be and and the goal of that would be to basically explore if it's possible to apply the same concept, even the same code base, maybe to query you know logs, traces, profiles. Uh, we might need to replace some parts. We might need to, uh, you know, change things up a bit. This is why we have these extension points. Um, but if we can get to a place where we have a similar framework or the same framework with slightly different implementation for different observability uh, signals, I think that'd be, that would be great for everyone. And that's it. I've just also left some references here. Um, if you're if interested more in some of these topics um and yeah that's that's basically all i had thank you for listening i think we have time like plenty of time for questions yes yes thank you philip and again um let's let's open up for questions performance questions questions about the implementation I have a I have a couple of questions actually, um, but I want to let everybody else go first. Okay. I have a question too, kind of technical. Um, you mentioned that uh, you were running the operators in separate threads. Is that true? Um, uh, for the same stack. Uh, yes. So each each kind of query uh, gets its own operators, and then each operator can then run in in its own thread. Yeah. And then, um, so how? exactly do you pass the data between because you were showing the overlap there is it kind of streaming a single data point at a time yeah so um that's i think a great question um i didn't know whether to include that slide let me um so this might be uh this is kind of a hidden slide that i thought it might be too much detail but what what's passes between operators are actually batches of data instead of individual points. So we um, we use kind of a flavor called vector volcano and this vector basically like comes from there. The fact that um, passing a single sample is not very efficient. Uh, you end up with a lot of context switches and also modern CPUs, they work usually with cache lines instead of um, small bits of data. So um, we we create um, channels in Golang, uh, and then through these channels we patch we pass small batches of data, uh, and then as soon as a batch is is processed, then it gets returned to the operator that that produced that batch. So we also end up recycling memory all the time, um, and have a lower memory usage. I'm not sure if that made sense. Yeah, absolutely. That helps. Totally, totally. Just want to make sure it takes advantage of SMD and all that. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. So, so for some or or certain aggregations, we can definitely use SIMD and apply the the aggregation on a bigger batch instead of kind of working with small numbers. Thanks, Matt. Did you want to go next? Um, sure. I have a. I have actually two things. One's a question, and one is. Um, I want to raise awareness and say uh, thank you uh, for some of the stuff that the Thanos project has, has done uh, over the years. And I think Bartek could probably talk to this better than I, but um, I'm putting in the Slack here, uh, not in the Slack, rather, in the meeting chat, a link to a TOC issue unrelated to Thanos. Uh, but we got to talking about the role of the sandbox in the TOC last year um, and, and what some of the success stories are. And it turns out that the Thanos and the Perktex project together um, have a really awesome story to tell that we should trump it probably louder than we we do. Uh, I put links to Bartek's talk from 2019, but that was from 
well over a year ago, but it's still, I think, one of the better examples of multiple projects in the sandbox actually working together. So um, sort of part one is like, thanks for that. Maybe Bartek, you can talk to that a little bit, um, just for folks on the call that might not be aware of some of the history of the collaboration across projects that I think the Thanos project in particular has kind of led the way and is an example of what, what all, all sandbox projects should aim to do and really focus on moving the technology forward and, and less so about the you know, this project versus that project, but really working together. My actual question though was um, that I wanted to queue up and answer these two in whichever order y'all like. Um, in the Arrow project, uh, in, in sort of the, the Arrow flight SQL substrate kind of stack, um, there's some optimization work going on that I'm not intimately familiar with, but passingly familiar with and curious about um, around leveraging um, storage acceleration um, in the form of like, you know, um, either, uh, either inline compression uh, or other sorts of storage accelerator stuff um that more larger scale enterprise level storage uh, appliances are starting to 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 have in in box uh and so they're they're making some plugins and sort of like a a model to 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 leverage those sorts of things um that, that are happening in the storage landscape uh given the kind of the, the design that you're, you're pushing down data that you were talking to in some of the federation scenarios it just got me thinking i realized it's a totally different layer of the thanos stack but um, is there sort of, from a roadmap perspective or in place already, any, any sort of way to um, let Thanos at the storage layer capitalize on some of the advancements happening both in NVMe uh, and PCI Express Warbus stuff, um, as well as the storage hardware stuff that, that, that seems to be? Um, yeah. Uh, so I'm not too familiar with um what the arrow project is. I'm, I'm familiar with definitely with the arrow project um, and all the, the, the whole ecosystem. I think that um, because we were still kind of fairly coupled to the Prometheus storage format, uh, it might be hard to apply some of the same optimizations. And um, I think, yeah, so I think Arrow has been really designed with that in mind um, to, to be able to kind of, you know, with SIMD in mind and um, being able to. Um, have um, direct access um, to, to data without needing to decode, do a lot of decoding and things like that. Whereas the Prometheus format is like a very compact, it's been made to be very compact. So it's hard to push uh, computation into the storage format without actually decoding, uh, doing the decoding work. And then as, as soon as you have to do the decoding work, uh, you've already wasted a lot of kind of You've done a bunch of stuff, and it's probably not. Um, it it might not be worth doing um, some of the the same techniques. So, I think that might be um, one one obstacle. Um, we've I we've definitely looked into also things like uh, Parquet or maybe storing data in Parquet format. But um, the work that has to be done is th th there's still quite a bit of work that needs to be done um before we get to a place where we can say well we now support also prometheus and also parquet and also third party formats and people can store data in any mm -hmm. um in in any format that's adequate i think that'd be great if we get there and then we'll probably even get better integration with arrow but it's still a, a, a major milestone i'd say yeah, I, I didn't mean to say like, are you using Arrow necessarily, but more just the general approach of having plugins and stuff. And, and as you pointed out with Prometheus at the storage layer, um, do, do you see this as just something that's not needed for the scenarios that people use Thanos? Um, or or do you see it as a, a potential, you know, on the other side of the coin, like a potential a lever to bring to the Prometheus team to drive like, Hey, we want to open up the storage layer to these kinds of optimizations, maybe, or is this just like not the right layer or the not not the right place to do it at all? Um, but like from a scope perspective mm -hmm. of the Thanos project, are, are you meant to not care at all about the storage layer, or do you see that as a growth area? As yeah, I think also Bartek might have some some kind of input and opinions there. I think from from my um, side, what I also see is that. Um, we still like the 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 metric the amount of metrics data that you can collect is still not in like the most for most companies it's still not in the petabytes 
um, scale. So it's still we can still get by without having those optimizations. Um, but um, yeah, I I don't think it's in. Yeah, I, I also as you mentioned, it might not be in the scope also of the Tans project to um, to get into the, like the nitty gritty details of of the Prometheus storage format. I think that will be a bit too much scope for also us as maintainers. I don't know if Bartek has any other opinion. Yeah, yeah, I can I can give my opinion. I think you are totally right, uh, Philip, in a sense that you know. Um, all those cool ideas that perhaps might give some uh, improvements like parquet format, like Apache Arrow structures, uh, like maybe a specialized hardware, all those, you know, kind of feel cool, but no one proved that they actually improve anything with metric specific data set with Prometheus data model, right? So there are, those are big unknowns. Mm -hmm. So covering a few months of work to double check that is epic, but might not give results, right? So uh, we we are kind of conscious with the amount of time and and focus we have to we have to do within Danos project to not sacrifice other important things like resiliency, right, maintenance and and accuracy um, things. So I think it's, we we can choose some innovations. We have to innovate. And by the way, I think I disagree, Philip, with you. I think Danos should innovate within storage because at some point we are surpassing a format limitations of Prometheus that for Prometheus are fine, but for other storages like, and by the way, Cortex and Mimir are using exactly the same storage as well. Um, we might need to innovate here, right? Um, yeah. But there, there might be not enough okay. information yeah. to, to, to really prove that this is worth it yet. Yes, so yes I agree. Thank you, for the, thank you for that nuanced answer. I'll just follow up with one minor follow-up um, regarding to sort of the, the the blogs and stuff from 2019 when the Cortex project and the Thanos project were really um, overlapping communities, really. And we actually, we actually had some co-sharing. Um, could you give an update, like, in the last year or two of Thanos, like, has, has, is that still collaboration at the grassroots, at least, I would imagine, still there? Or has has, has it really, have they drifted apart? Or what's the current status of, of cross-project um, work between the two houses, right, to borrow the Shakespeare? So, as far as I know, Cortex still uses um, code base, part of the code base, code base from Thanos, and they do make active pull requests and contributions. We have a maintainer that's a Thanos maintainer and a Cortex maintainer. Um, that relationship works very well. Um, they've also made contributions to the query engine. Also, um, so um, I'd say it's still, um, you know, it's still a good collaboration. Um, yeah. I know, Bartek, anything you want to say? I mean, yeah, like it's a little bit different definitely than 2018 because mm -hmm. um, different stakeholders are, at least in Thanos, it's similar. Maybe the, uh, you know, the stakeholders and, and usage grown and, and, and we have more maintainers and it's not, <clears throat> you know, uh, yeah, there's just more people involved versus in Cortex, uh, the, the ownership kind of changed. I mean, the ownership was CNCF and this, but uh, generally Grafana was very active and now they, they, the activity moved to Mimi, right? So uh, just different, um, you know, like uh, energy spent um, on Cortex. There is definitely only, you know, like a few vendors, but including a big one, which is Amazon that, that really is involved in Cortex, that changes their focus a little bit. So, so definitely, uh, they might have a little bit different uh, collaboration, but we still discuss. Like I, I, I know on every KubeCon we just talk to each other and like, and we always talk. Okay, when we merge together, like, and and uh, <laughs> there's always like opportunity of like, yeah, or, like we discuss. Okay, let's let's give this blog post that we are merging together, and that there's this idea, there's this discussion there. But unfortunately, it seems like it's not enough. Uh, they don't have enough time, and maybe Tunnels as well uh, to really like fully discuss those options, but. Uh, that's, that's the status, I guess. Yeah, I mean, but if that's a very good point you raise. And I think that, you know, again, from an end user perspective and really, you know, some of the foundational areas for innovation that still exist, like storage, like performance, you know, and other optimizations, both on Thanos and Cortex. I think that uh, there is a need for both the teams, you know, both the projects to collaborate very closely and um, and just you know leverage uh, some of the common 
you know, uh, foundations um, as much as possible unless the projects merge, right? Because again, think of it from an end user perspective. It's very hard for, you know, both the projects to um, uh, really compete, right? That's not the point. The point should be actually how do you provide a great engineering solution unless, you know, there's something dramatically different in the Cortex implementation that that cannot use Thanos, right? So, so I think well, there's yeah. discussion to be had there and and uh, figuring out, you know, how we can actually make sure that the the community is well supported and and uh, you know the technology where which we all love to work on uh, is you know supported also. Matt, were you saying something? Sorry. Um. Well, I had one. I had one other question, but I'm jumping the gun, and I want again. I want to make sure I don't just fill time to fill time. Uh, I, I want to, but I'll, I'll reserve it if there's time and after everybody else is done. I have a question. Just uh, is are there any references for uh, numbers that you ran like uh, somewhere that uh, can be viewed? Those are the performance improvements that you mentioned. The benchmark um, that you ran probably or, or thing like that yeah we have them um so here in the in the repository the length um we have benchmarks against the the prometheus we benchmarked initially against the prometheus engine because that was our target we probably need to use a different benchmark now because we're uh we've way surpassed that by 80 90 percent improvement um already but the the kind of the benchmarks that we've used are, are here in the repository, like right there in the readme. Great, thank yeah, you. Cool. Thanks, thanks for the links, Philip. All right, I think uh, we are at time uh, and I just wanted to ask if there were any other questions folks had. Um, again, super presentation. Thank you, Philip, for joining in. Really appreciate uh, your taking the time. And also Bartek for, you know, uh, pulling in Philip to uh, encourage him to <laughs> come and present. So all good teamwork and and you know that's what makes all of us. Uh, wait, 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 Alita, that was you who encouraged. <laughs> you <laughs> you work, teamwork, teamwork, and and you did. <laughs> I, 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 so I was kind of curious about the um the PromQL relay or, or federation. Uh, you know where you can where they, that you mentioned and and sort of query federation. I'm kind of curious, like, what what level of maturity do you think it is there now? Like, I mean, that that's a huge. Um, there's a lot of possibility there. Is is, is it sort of like a, a more simple relay kind of uh, to to wire things together to either do either you know upgrades or go into mixed environments? You know, as as you mentioned, all of those kinds of scenarios, or is it, do you see it more as like an actual query engine that's going to be doing like you know some level of sharding and or um, mirroring and and managing you know, where, where various queries go. Um, do, do, and, yeah. and, and do you see it sort of like a neat thing or is it like a poor piece of the roadmap? Um, you know, as people like, you can imagine a scenario where like uh, a, one company merges with another or an acquisition happens and now you've got, I've had to do this, you know, you, you have like multiple technology stacks and, and you're looking for sort of, how can we get a consistent set of understanding of what's going on with all these services? It seems like this facility in, in Thanos might be a really great tool for those sorts of scenarios mm -hmm. yeah um yeah definitely like migrations can be one one um use case so yeah so maybe to kind of start from the beginning so far it's uh, mostly kind of a relay uh type mm -hmm. um integration where you have a we have a query that might be you know a thanos query and an, a managed service and we want to kind of query data from both places in the in a single query that's that's kind of the use case um, mm -hmm. and both both need to be able to execute from chaos so obviously tunnels can do it and as long as the external service can do it it's all good if the external service cannot do it um, it's still possible to write an adapter as long as it can like that adapter can take from and translate to whatever the external service understands um, so it's still possible to do the integration it, we might need you know a bit more work um and we've kind of done that for for some of our internal services uh we've written adapters basically 
um so but yeah foreign I'm, wrappers and postgres or something like that like a, just to materialize into data that way yeah cool. exactly exactly yeah. um but yeah migrating stuff or you know for example if you're running in a cloud provider you and and the cloud provider already gives you some metrics for free uh you don't want to pull those metrics into your infrastructure you want to query them from the cloud provider and that's also another good use case mm -hmm. uh, where you have both like Prometheus internally, but also you have metrics that are available, maybe even for free. Uh, so you don't want to scrape them or ingest them or you know pay additionally for this data that's already available. Mm -hmm. Good. That's, Good. Actually, that's a stellar idea, actually. Um, namely, because it's, in the, it's it's one of the few. There's a lot of cases where qualitative decisions about using this or that are made, but that's a quantifiable one, right? You could be like watch the query load, and you could actually. I, I would I would imagine one one, one could almost auto-generate the optimizations at the same time that you're quantifying the actual dollars saved by leveraging one versus the other. You don't often get the, like a, a fully quantifiable value proposition that's really just, we will save this if we do that. Um, so that's another potential um, great talking point. Um, yeah. Or, yeah, more than a talking point. But thank you again. It was a wonderful presentation. Um, I love the, the depth. And, yep, and yep, absolutely. Useful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Cool, cool. Thanks again, everyone. And uh, we will circle back uh, in the next iteration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Thanks. Great job, Bartek. It's cool. <laughs>